Welcome to Okanagan Lavender and Herb Farm. We're in peak lavender season now and we're really excited to show you some tips on picking your lavender, how to use it, and um, especially here we wanted to illustrate two very different species of lavender. So on my right, this one that's in full bloom is from the species Lavandula angustifolia. All that means is narrow-leafed lavender. English lavender is one of the most well-known lavenders in this group. They're beautiful, sweet, soft-smelling lavenders. They're wonderful for cooking with. You can make lavender gelato, uh, lavender lemonade, lavender syrup, lavender shortbread. And uh, the other lavender that I have here, this is a hybrid lavender. It's a longer stem, it's a later bloom. It's used mainly for essential oil distillation, but you can also use this one in cooking because the long, stiff stems make wonderful skewers for your barbecue. So when you go to cut your lavender, um, we use a sickle. They're fabulous. You can find them at farm implement stores like uh, Buckerfields. Um, and then the other tool that we love are these traditional Chinese floral scissors. These are from Lee Valley. If I'm using my scissors, because I'm just cutting some for my kitchen, I'm just going to go right into the plant. I'm going to go down to the base, grab a handful, and snip it with my scissors. Now, you will notice our lavender is covered with bees, and there's great bee etiquette. You're never noisy around bees. If you're calm, the bees will be calm. Um, if they're all over my bush, I have many bushes the bees will forage from. They're just working. So if I just take my scissors or my lavender stems and I shake the bush, the bees are going to go to a different bush. They are not interested in me. It is rare to get stung as long as you follow good bee etiquette. So if you have a lot of lavender in your yard on a, on a bank or in a hedge, scissors might not be practical because you have too much. So this is where the sickle is a beautiful garden tool. And what you do is you use your sickle, brush the bees away, pull it together, and it's just a flick of your wrist. And this is how we cut all of the lavender at our farm, by hand with sickles. It allows us to pick at the perfect stage and you can get a nice big bundle. Then we just keep elastics on our wrists, bundle it like that, hang it to dry, and uh, I'll take you inside the shop and I'll show you how you can strip the dried flowers from the lavender. So I could use this to make lemonade today, but I might, I might be wanting it for next week. So I'm going to dry some and then I can use it any time of year. So this is the hybrid lavender. Uh, the common name is lavandine. The species name is Lavandula X intermedia. It just means the X means it's a cross. Uh, it has a spicy, camphorous, strong aroma. Not great in your kitchen. Beautiful for a sachet. Uh, lovely dried bundle. But the big difference between these two species, you can see this one has open flowers. The scent is soft and subtle. This one, Hardly anything is open yet, so this one is not ready to pick yet. I want to wait until about half of the flowers are open on it. So if I hold them together, you can see the difference in the blooms. This one has flowers that are open, this one has nothing open. This is ready to pick, not ready to pick. So we grow uh, so many different lavenders because we use them for different products. So. On my right here, this is our beautiful Mayette lavender. Mayette is one that we distill for essential oil. It has a citrus note in the oil and it's absolutely beautiful in bath salt. We use it in gelato. The other lavender here, this is one of our pinks. The pinks have a very soft scent, so I don't use them in sachets. Mainly these are a landscape accent. They're beautiful in the garden and you can see the contrast between a purple lavender and the pink is very becoming in the garden. So we're back up in the classroom at 
the farm. And this is a lavender that we just picked in the lower field. It's a beautiful variety called Annette. And this is what it looks like when it's fresh. And this is what it will look like just a few days later when it's been dried. So you can see the purple color shifts to blue almost entirely. Um, and that's what lavender does. It does a color change on you. Annette is a beautiful bundle because if you pick it at the right stage, your scent is going to last about two years. If you put it in a vase and keep it away from direct sunlight, it's going to hold its color for that long as well. Um, so I'm going to just shift this to the side and I want to show you how we strip lavender. So um, this is not a net because a net is difficult to disbud. This is an English bundle. I love these old enamelware bowls, the old wash basins. They have nice wide rims. They're great for collecting the buds as they fall. So um, I'm going to take it upside down like this. Rub it with my hands. This is quite dusty work, so if the dust bothers you, you should definitely wear a mask. We wear masks when we strip it. If you get a little bit of the lavender dust in your throat, eat a cracker or a piece of bread because water just seems to let you keep coughing. So. In my bowl, I have all the lavender buds, and that's all that's left are just the twiggy parts of the lavender. What I'm going to use is just a kitchen sieve, and I have just a smaller little bowl here. This is a great job to do outside, especially when there's a breeze because it will just take the dust away. So with my sieve, I've just shaken the lavender, got rid of the dust, and now just to show you how much dust comes out of a bundle of lavender. There it is. Now, the reason I get rid of the dust is if I was making a sachet, the dust is very fine, it would come through the fabric. And also when I'm cooking, I don't want that dust in my, in my baking. Um, what do you use lavender for in the kitchen? Oh my goodness. There's many, many things. Uh, you can make ice cream with it, lemonade. You can do lavender hot chocolate. You can put lavender in any dish that is vanilla-based, citrus-based, like lemon. Orange is beautiful with it. Chocolate is delicious. Some rules of thumb with lavender, never use too much. If you, if you remember with the cheesecake recipe, add between one teaspoon and one tablespoon of lavender. Better to start small and work up so that you don't overpower the dish. Um, you can infuse cream with lavender and then use it to make a whipped cream. Thanks for joining us at Workshop Wednesday. We love having you here in the classroom with us. We love to cook with lavender, so if you have questions on the type of lavender to use or some recipe tips, please leave us a message in the comments below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for visiting.